Y'all ready to shout a little bit? How'd you get up this morning? Here we go. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on freedom. Stayed on freedom. Yes, I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on freedom. Stayed on freedom. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on freedom. Stayed on freedom. part of this community and all that you have given and shared. So we take this opportunity to be grateful for those who are here with us for the first time. Hi, I'm Petra Weldis, Senior Minister of the Center for Spiritual Living in Dallas, and we're delighted that you found us here on the web. You can find our Sunday services on our website by every Wednesday. And we love that you can look at us online and explore these spiritual teachings. Feel free to explore our archives. It goes back a number of years with lots of special topics and amazing speakers. You can also sign up for our email news, my daily words, and my blog, Spiritual Living with Dr. Petra. If you're looking for a spiritual community, come visit us. Or if you're just in Dallas, drop on by. We'd love to give you a hug. Welcome home. I am exactly where I need to be, I need to be exactly where I am, I am a blessing manifest and I can undress the moment, naked time unwinds beneath my mind and from within I find the kind of beauty only I can find. I am exactly where I need to be, I need to be exactly where I am, I am surrendering so willingly. To be the perfect me inside this now and truly how else could it be? Destiny, she blesses me. Destiny, she blesses me. And when I try to fight or run, I only wind up back at square one. And when I think I know what's best for me, she takes me back 
you exactly where I need to be. I am exactly where I need to be. I need to be exactly where I am. I am divinely timed and shining brightly. Yes, I believe that there's a purpose just for me. Yes, I believe that we are light and we shine infinitely. Whoa. And I am truly free when I accept my own divinity Look at me, look at me closely Tell me exactly what you see If you are paying attention You will now begin ascension of the mind Why? Because if you look at me just right You will see a kiss For it took a kiss to make this breath exist The intersection of my mother's and father's lips To touch, twist Perfect what came next to produce me. Yes, look at me and you will see the breeze. The breeze it took to shake the leaves, to make my mother's hair move, my father dare touch and say, please, may I have a kiss? Yes, the breeze made me exist. And if you want to get even deeper into this right now, look at me and you will see a big old cloud. That's right, the cloud it took to form the storm, to make the breeze, to shake the leaves, to inspire the lip lock. Yes, raindrops will pop up out of these words. Look at me and you will see a dark, stormy night. And what is night? Well, night ain't night without the polar opposite sunlight. So if you watch the way my hands sway, you'll see the light of day. And every day is a testament of the sediment of the earth's core. It's ever spinning enormous force. And if you look at me, you can see a spark of that force. But the most fascinating thing about this, and it's true, that if you look at me just right, you'll see you. And it's only what you perceive and how you see the distance between you and me that creates reality. So when I sing, you can feel it. When I cry, you can heal it. When I speak words, you can do the words that I speak by singing with me. Peace, love, free. Peace, love, free. Peace, love, free. Peace, love, free. Yeah. Peace, love, free. 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 And when I try to fight or run, I only wind up back at me back to exactly where I need to be and when I am alone and full of fear I just remember the rising sun always appears and every day miracles well miracles that I see while well, you take me back you take me back Take me back, you take me back to exactly where I need to be. Bo -bo 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 -bo. Whoa, 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 yeah, yeah. I am exactly where I need to be. I need to be exactly where I am. I am a blessing manifest. I'm exactly where I need to be. How about you? Yeah. Would you want to be any place else right now? Okay, good. So I got you captured now. Did you miss it? Right. Did you miss it? Right. Yeah. I missed a few of your words. I got to hear. I, thank goodness it's on video so I can go back. Um, so, did you miss it? Well, did you miss all the things you could have been grateful for before you even got here? Because I bet there were a lot of them. So I was thinking about this talk title, and it's like, did you miss it? I, there are a lot of things that sometimes I miss that just like fly by, or I just don't pay attention, or I'm putting my attention somewhere else, and I miss all the things that I can be grateful for. And sometimes that's easy for me to do. And gratitude brings me right back to where I need to be. That's what I have found recently, that the practice of really being grateful for all the things in my life and all the good brings me back 
inwardly to right where I need to be. Um, there's this great phrase, look for the good and praise it. So where, whatever situation or relationship or work or anything, it's like when it starts to spin and swirl and, and perhaps we start to focus on things like, I don't know, jealousy, resentment, frustration, I'm not good enough, any of that, gratitude can be that lifeline to pull us right back into the center of ourselves. Ernest Holmes tells us that the attitudes of praise and thanksgiving are salutary. They not only lighten the consciousness, lifting it out of sadness and depression, they elevate consciousness to a point of acceptance. Praise and thanksgiving are affirmations of the divine presence, the divine abundance, and the divine givingness. It's like gratitude lifts not only our consciousness, but have you ever tried it? It's like lifts us out of the sadness or the depression or whatever situation it might be going on in our life and, and can bring us not only to a place of acceptance, but by practicing what am I grateful for in my life, it actually will be that lifeline to pull us through things. And what happens if I'm in the energetic of gratitude, I'm attracting more things to come into my life that now I get to be grateful for. So it's this beautiful um, building to grow my life in, in, in all kinds of ways by practicing gratitude. One of the things that I've recently been reflecting on with my, my recent journey in breast cancer that I haven't shared is this practice that somehow I began to take up about what am I grateful for in this situation. When I was first, I got the news. It was like, okay, there must be something good to come out of it. So I started looking for the good and started praising it. And there was a lot of good that came quickly for me. One, okay, the appearance of uh, being contained in a very small space in my body that it had not spread. I was like, oh, I was so grateful for that. I had um, some close friends that I had developed here and, uh, and already with, with Dr. Petra, and they got to be with me in various doctor's appointments because I didn't want to feel alone. I also needed another set of ears to hear because I might have not been fully present in the room. And those friends came, and I was so grateful for that. And my friendships with each of them got to deepen. You know, day of surgery, we celebrated, we walked around, they got to watch me with my IV pole. I did not put that one on Facebook. But, you know, my IV pole, you know, the, the afternoon, the same day. And, and so I started focusing, especially on those times when I was alone in recovery or whatnot, I started focusing whenever my sadness and my depression and my body has changed or whatever was coming up for me, I started focusing on, but what am I grateful for? And, and I'm grateful that my relationship with my mother is now in a place it's never been. And, and I was sort of somewhat estranged from my brother and now we're close and he's actually going through something right now. And so I get to be there with him. And so all of this, because I focused on what am I grateful for in this situation? And it just spread in such an amazing way. Ernest Holmes also tells us that gratitude is not only a, thank you, Petra. Gratitude is not only a virtue, but it is also, but it also is a part of a practical philosophy of daily life. There is no wiser way of living than to remember every morning what life has given us and to lift our thought in thankfulness for every bounty we possess or perhaps get to enjoy. I've started, like, when I wake up, I become grateful that I woke up. <laughs> Especially on those mornings, like, I have to get up early to go catch a flight, and oh, it's so, oh, I'm grateful I woke up. Right? Because we know the alternative, not ever waking up or the light cascading through the shutters, or whatever. It's, you know, the cup of coffee that I get to enjoy, albeit briefly, before I move to work, or whatever. And so it lifts us up. 
again, I, I just, I have this visualization of this lifeline, and so when things come up in our life, gratitude can pull us through those changes, can help us move through those changes by focusing on what are we grateful for, what are we thankful for, putting, looking for that good, because if we don't, and we look for the other, we didn't have a PowerPoint for service, y'all didn't know that, but we were looking for all the good. And it was a beautiful service without the PowerPoint. And now we have one because Michael was here all morning making sure that happened. Well, I'm grateful for Michael Deese and all he gives his community. We are um, uh, using this amazing book this month. This is a perfect month. The, the month of Thanksgiving and gratitude and by Rhonda Byrne, and, and she's the one who did The Secret, and this is a gratitude journal, so I invite you to go get this in our bookstore. It's a working book. It's not a read a lot of stuff book. You get to journal in it. And our two amazing practitioners, Sandra Francis and Cindy Young, are working with this book all month at the Wednesday night services. And so I invite you to join them because as we focus on what we are grateful for, things grow. It's like fertile soil. And I am so grateful that I get to share the talk with Dr. Petra because we have such amazing news that we want to share. So I'm going to let her share with you all what we've been cooking up. So, um, so it occurred to me as um, Karen was finishing up her talk, gratitude is a little bit like um, manure. You can either focus on the smell, or you can on what's, or you can focus on how it's making things grow, right? <laughs> and so, especially when things are, um, especially when we have been doing a lot of treatment work around something, or when things are changing, that thought of did you miss it? How many times have, have we done this powerful treatment about something, we've, we've set a direction, set an intention, made this amazing declaration, then got on with our lives, and then one day we went, wait, wait, there it went, we, oh, God, it was back there, it happened. Yeah. And we missed it. Yeah, yes? Because we were not always paying attention, because we don't, we, be, this notion of gratitude is what allows us to stop and take a moment to focus on that powerful good. I was reading an article the other day, um, and the headline was, The Single Thing That Will Guarantee Your Success in Life. And I went, ooh, man, that's a big claim. The single thing that will guarantee your success in life. I was terribly curious. So I opened the article and began to read it. The single big, the single thing that will guarantee your success? Gratitude. That which you pay attention to grows. Appreciation increases things in value. It supports the people that are around you. It causes you to believe in yourself and it causes you to, to move forward on your dreams because you learn to trust them. Gratitude is the single gift that we can give ourselves for our own success and our own furthering. So we had a lot of gratitude last week about our Adventures in Spirit um, campaign. We had a lot of gratitude about where we were. And if you'll remember, our goal was $543,000 and 189 pledges and more. And you know that we reached 189 pledges and we blew our goal out of the water. Well, as of today, we're at 193 pledges. And now this is where we were last Sunday, and this is where we are this Sunday. $671,416. So, um, yes, and if you still want to be part of this success train, you certainly can, and we would be grateful for you to participate. But we are grateful for each and every one of you um, that has made this a reality. This is what really allows us to grow. Personally, I'm grateful. I don't have to go raise another year's worth of Karen's remuneration. Because um, that was a scary thing for me. And um, I'm also grateful that uh, Reverend Karen was willing to 
take a chance. You see, when she came out here, when she packed her bags and she put them in her U-Haul and she drove them out here, I could only guarantee her one year's salary. And um, she took the chance. She decided not to miss it. Yeah. <laughs> took the chance, she decided not to miss it. I decided not to miss an opportunity and a possibility. And you have now made it possible for that remuneration to actually be fully engaged in our budget, and that is an extraordinary thing. As you also know, we are working on reworking our lease here. Um, this really helps us in the process of the expansion that we are planning on doing. Um, we will be able to actually pay for more space um, with this, we'll be able to create a, a brand new website next year, um, which many of you know we desperately need. <laughs> and some of the other things that are going on. And so it's really extraordinary. Um, we are deep in the process of working with our new space. We will be coming to you for capital money, probably a couple hundred thousand dollars to do the remodeling. One of the biggest pieces of that remodeling is we're going to take that whole space upstairs and we're gonna dedicate its entirety to YFM. We're gonna double the size of our youth and family ministries. And, um, and that was, that's one of our priorities for this coming year. And we've done a lot of things with youth and family ministry outside of um, the Sunday morning program, and we've uh, worked to develop a lot of things. And, and what we notice and discover is that it's the Sunday morning program that is the cornerstone of what we do um, for our youth and family. Actually, you know, I think of how many of you, and I have you in my classes, say, I wish I had learned this when I was a kid. Yes? yes? So I was fortunate. I stumbled into Science of Mind when I was 18, so I was still barely a kid, and I was very grateful that I have walked this path my whole life. And this is the gift that we're gonna be giving our children. I want our children to be so amazed and so lifted and so well taught in these principles and philosophies and for Sunday morning to be so exciting that they are dragging you here on a Sunday morning and saying, mom, we can't miss it. Dad, we've got to go. We've gotta be a part of what's going on because we know that it changes lives and we don't wanna miss the opportunity. We don't want to miss the opportunity for our children, and we don't want to miss the opportunity for the children that are hungry for this message, for our teens, for our young adults, uh, for all of us that really thrive because we're part of this community, because we're part of this teaching, um, whether we're in the seats, whether we're watching online, however it is that we are participating um, with the Center for Spiritual Living Dallas. Now, one of the things that happened when Reverend Karen and I first started talking about this and we were able to bring her on board is that we had an idea about how this was going to work. You do this, I'll do this. You do this, I'll do that. Yeah, it was good in theory. <laughs> and so then Reverend Karen, she came and she started learning about what was going on and started getting involved and understanding um, uh, this particular community, this particular organization. One of the things that I promised to Karen was that she wasn't being hired as our executive director. Uh, she, has actually, uh, she actually turned down that job at a much larger community than ours um, at a much larger salary than we can pay her at this moment um, because she's actually called to be a minister. But through this process over the last uh, seven or eight months as we've really gotten to see what our strengths are, how we support each other, and how um, we can best utilize that for our organization. And because we have the luxury of this extraordinary um, pledge program, we have the opportunity to think about our, uh, our organization and how it is structured and how we can really build a, 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 the next level foundation to, um, to grow us. So we're building a shared leadership model here in between the two of us in terms of how we are unfolding this organization. So um, we're sharing this with you also so that you'll have some understanding of how we're moving forward. So Reverend Karen is actually bringing her business acumen to bear. She's going to be responsible primarily um, on, um, she's gonna be the primary one responsible for operations and communications. Not that we won't be supporting each other in our individual areas, but she's gonna bring all of her years of expertise into these areas, into operations and into communications. 
Whereas I'm going to bring my years of uh, training and work within the communities um, to, to education and youth and family ministry. Um, both of the, oh, sorry, to education, which includes youth and family ministry. And actually that second line should say sacred service ministry. Um, we have a 400 position volunteer program. I've been running volunteer programs for 30 years. And so I'm gonna be um, building our program to support the ongoing growth of this organization and, this, and, and that which um, supports this community. So if you are not currently volunteering someplace, I need you. <laughs> and I want you to be a part of it. So come see me. Um, and then we have areas that we will be sharing in the unfolding of the ministry, and those are services and celebrations, um, the ministry and pastoral care, the small group ministry, um, the sanghas, those sorts of things, and then the community development um, in growing our community, our visitors, our friends, our members, um, uh, all of the ways in which we relate to each other as a community, the fellowship that we do together, um, those sorts of things. And so we've, we've really um, had a good understanding about how to utilize our strengths with each other and for the good of our organization to, um, yeah, to, to build something that we see as the springboard for our growth. We're actually really excited about this possi these possibilities. We've had a fabulous staff meeting, a staff retreat on Friday. We'll, ha uh, we'll have um, Thursday and Friday of next week, led by our beautiful practitioner, Sherry Wood. She is doing an amazing job um, with the staff, really inviting us into this new place. And out of this process, all of our staff is writing department plans. So as we have been reorganizing and rethinking and redoing and, and working through all of this, we've had amazing um, uh, department plans coming forward. Uh, Reverend Vince with Pastoral Care, yeah, watch out. You're going to be seeing pastoral care really exploding next year. And uh, um, Andrew Tinker, well, I used it in the first service. It seems to be true. I'll say it again. Because it's Andrew Tinker, is a kick-ass department plan for music and fine arts <laughs> for uh, 2015. And that uh, seems very appropriate. And so, and so it's very exciting. So one of the things that also happens, that has happened in this change, in this growth, is that some of our staff has actually let us know that they're looking for a change. Actually, something that you don't know that was said to us confidentially, said to me confidentially in June, Doreen Breedlove said, now that I'm becoming a practitioner, I'm really ready to let go of YFM. She's been our YFM director for a really long time. Um, <clears throat> of course, we'll have lots of opportunity to say um, thank you to her, um, but she's really, Ready, you're gonna see her. She's moving into leadership here at CSL Dallas. She's got classes she wants to, she's got all kinds of plans and things that she wants to do and she's ready to let go of, our, of um, being our um, youth and family ministry director. And so in this process, that really allows us, that really allowed us to rethink what we're doing, to rethink how this program is being built. And so we are looking now not for a youth and family ministry uh, director, we're looking for a youth and family ministry coordinator who will focus on Sunday morning, um, on our Sunday morning's experience and coordinating this. And the reason that we are making this change is because we've decided that we're actually gonna pay our Sunday morning teachers. We actually want our Sunday morning teachers to receive a stipend and some remuneration <laughs> in um, recognition of the extraordinary amount of, of time they put into it, the work with the curriculum that they do, the training that we're going to pr be providing to seriously up-level what we're offering on a Sunday morning. And so we're gonna be focusing all of our resources and attention on that. So, so that's gonna be unfolding at the beginning of next year. And so at the end of this year, we actually want to bring on a part-time um, YFM coordinator. Somebody will help just coordinate the trainings and the teachers and that sort of thing. So if you have some background and some interest in this, um, please email me. Uh, please email me by the end of the month and we'll be putting out job descriptions and, um, and then we'll start interviewing and talking to people. Now, as, as luck would have it, as it, I mean, well, luck, it's silly. I don't know why I even say that. As, as the serendipities of the universe would unfold inappropriately, as um, changes were coming down the pike and we were rethinking, 
Um, our beloved Dottie, he, she said to me um, in July or so, she said, I don't understand, I'm not sure we still need a business director. I'm not sure that that is an appropriate way for us to be um, handling our finances. I don't think we need that anymore. We, what we need is an administrator. We need an office manager. And she's, so she is actually starting a business. She has plans and things to do, and she is ready for that, uh, soaring to take flight. And so we are actually reformatting that position into an office manager position. This is a full-time position. It is about the systems and processes and the infrastructure of the office and the office in support of the office staff. So if you are interested in a position like that, please talk to Reverend Karen, send her your resume. We'll be putting job descriptions out, um, and this will become the baseline for our staff, um, providing that kind of administrative support, which we um, really need. And then that frees up Dottie to go really do what it is that she wants to do. One of the things that I've noticed about our community is that we're very loyal. We're very loyal and we love this community. And sometimes it's hard to say, you know what, I don't want to do it anymore. We have people who stay in volunteer positions. They look around and they say, well, I, I don't see anybody coming up, so I guess I, I guess I just have to keep doing it. And one of the things that I've learned in my 15 plus years of ministry is, <laughs> is, is that it's, it's okay. It's okay to say I'm done. It's okay. No shame, no blame. It's okay to say I'm done with that. I want to go do something else now. And, and to help create that transition um, is a really powerful thing. Sometimes people hang on and they, they stop loving it. And the truth is, they're actually taking the space of the person who really wants to be there. So if you ever find yourself in that position, please see me. It's much easier to make that transition when everybody wants to be in it. It's really bad when you have taken it on so long that you become resentful. You're no longer spiritually fed by being part of our community, and so you decide to leave. And then we would miss you. And we would have missed the moment when that change could have happened in a really profoundly powerful way that would have been good for everybody. And so I'm really speaking from my heart to yours. Please don't let that happen. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking for us that are here um, that, that want to work with you. And so good enough, Dottie is not... Um, allowed herself to come to this position. She is, is ready to fly with her business, um, and so that leaves this space for this reorganization to happen um, in our office. It also frees up some resources, and so that means we'll be um, channeling some resources into our communications department, and we'll, we will be br bringing our beloved Lane on full time, which is very exciting. Yeah. So uh, lots and lots of wonderful opportunity there. And then finally, as serendipity would have it, um, as we have continued to look around at how all of this would be organized and um, thinking about the bookstore, moving the bookstore um, into um, Reverend Karen's purview, and her getting pretty excited about the possibilities, that then, of course, it unfolds um, that our bookstore manager, our current bookstore manager, while well, she has become a licensed trainer with Hay House, facilitator with Hay House, um, and the work that she's doing with Louise Hay, um, and she actually this week opened her new business, and she was wondering how she was going to be able to tell us that she didn't want to do this beyond the end of the year. Um, once again, we didn't miss it. So she's going to be passing the baton on to someone else. And so we're looking for a bookstore manager. Um, this will be a part-time per, uh, position on a small stipend with a small commission. And we really um, and are looking for someone who wants to make this thing grow. Um, lots of exciting ideas and opportunities about how that could be. If you have always wanted to have a little bookstore or a gift shop, if you've always wanted to play in this arena, Please um, see Reverend Karen, see, uh, send her her resume, talk to um, Lisa about what she's been doing and where she's been going. 
Um, so we don't normally take all this much time on a Sunday morning to have an organizational conversation, um, and yet it's really important for us to be on the same page and for you to know what's going on and how things are moving and shifting. And because of the powerful generosity of your hearts, we are actually really able to utilize the skills and talents that we have and to bring them forward in a way that, um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. So I'm excited to say we're not missing the opportunity that's available in this moment. And we don't want you to miss it. We want you to be a part of it. And I want to be so clear about my deep and abiding gratitude the gratitude that I have for Reverend Karen, who was willing to uh, step out on faith with a moment of, um, with, a, with a year's promise, a year's commitment um, to come and, and to, to uh, support me to be part of this community for us to unfold something here that's really exciting. Um, and I want to thank you for being a part of it, for supporting it, for caring about it, uh, for making this your home. I strike heart says if there's only one prayer that you would ever pray, if there's only one prayer to pray, it's the prayer of thank you. So let us pray. Thank you. Thank you that we are part of that one infinite presence. Thank you that, that you're here in these seats. Thank you that you love this community. Thank you that the sun rose this morning and the breeze simply invited us to feel the presence. Thank you for the cool air. Thank you for the love in this room. Thank you for the light that illuminates our hearts. Thank you for the outpouring of generosity. Thank you for the presence of your unique gift that you bring to the world. Thank you for the love between our souls. Thank you for the opportunities to stretch and grow and maybe even be a little uncomfortable so that we each become more of who we were meant to be. Thank you for the wind that lifts us, the love that supports us, the light that embraces us. Thank you for the blessing that we are to each other, that we are to the world. And so normally we uh, seal our prayer with an and so it is. I invite you to feel this prayer with me by simply saying together, thank you. Thank you.